wasn't there that morning when my father passed away. I couldn't get to tell him all the things I had to say. Say it loud, say it clear. You can listen as well as you can hear. It's too late when they die. It's too late when they die. Friends, today is Father's Day and I want to welcome you for a very special service. Those words are not from the Bible, but Luke 1.17 says that he will go forth in the spirit of Elijah and he will prepare the way for the Lord and he will turn the father's heart to their children. Fathers and children, the relationship is God-ordained and that is why we celebrate Father's Day. Would you pray with me? as you begin this wonderful service that God would minister to you and that God would minister to all the fathers and all the children. Everyone has been a child, so it is for everyone today. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your perfect plan. We thank you that in a world of imperfect fathers, that you are the perfect father. Lord, we thank you that even as you are the perfect father, that you ordained fatherhood and you ordained relationships between fathers and children. Lord, we thank you for family this morning. Lord, we thank you that you are God Almighty, that you are not only God of the past, but you, can, you are the God of the future. And I pray that everyone listening to us today, Lord, that you would touch our hearts and warm us so that we can recognize what your plan is, how your plan works out through the special relationships we have. And therefore, we commit this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we go into the amazing message that is there today, would you open your hearts in worship? Would you open your hearts with all that you have? Would you join our worship team as we worship one perfect Father? our Heavenly Father. Let's worship Him.
worship you. Lord, you are the one perfect Father, and we honor you and we glorify you. Lord, you are able to overcome all the imperfections of this world. Lord, you can overcome my imperfection as a father. Lord, my imperfection as a son. Lord, you are God Almighty. You are able to heal. You are able to restore. You are able to renew. And we thank you, God, for what you are going to do today. We praise you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, we ask one more time. Friends, before we go ahead, we also want to pray for the nation today. And we want to pray, especially for fathers in this season. You know the hearts that are broken the inability to provide, the brokenness that is there when you see children who cannot live up to their potential because of circumstances. God is still in control. I'm going to pray for that need. I'm going to pray for the nation. Would you join with me? Father in heaven, we call upon your name. Lord, we have honored you as a perfect father. Lord, because you can make all things beautiful all things good and so humbled and broken we bring our nation before you lord you know much better where we are than we can ever spell it out but we want to pray for fathers very specially fathers who are struggling to make ends meet for their families lord be with them walk with them open avenues of income for them open possibilities for them my prayer Lord, I pray that your comfort will be with them. Lord, I pray that whatever they have, as they desire your presence, as they desire your principles, that you would multiply what they have so they have enough for their families and then for some others as well. Lord, we pray for children who are struggling. Lord, being in their homes, Lord, sometimes more than other generations have. Lord, putting up, Lord, with with with. Lord, limitations, limitations of relationship, limitations of space and time. Lord, I pray that you would be with them as well. Father, we lift up our nation one more time. Lord, because you are still God supreme, because you still reign, Lord, we want to declare that our nation will rise again as your children call upon your name. Lord, undertake, I pray. Lord, I pray that you would release ideas Lord, I pray that you release strategies for those who would lead us. And Lord, if there are those, Lord, who do not want to lead us, Lord, with a clean heart, with a good intention, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would undertake and Lord, that you would make a leadership that would glorify your name. Father, we thank you one more time. We thank you one more time. In Jesus' name we ask one more time for your glory and for your honor alone. Friends, would you welcome uh, Pastor Dishan? I would say Father Dishan, because he himself is a father and a grandfather and knows a lot about the heart of a father as he comes and shares with you his Father's Day message. You know, a small boy said, Father's Day is just like Mother's Day. Only you don't spend as much on the gift. And I say, what gift? Happy Father's Day to all of you. To you fathers, biological fathers, stepfathers, spiritual fathers, grandfathers, all fathers. Happy Father's Day. Let's pray and ask God's blessing. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you that today we celebrate fathers and we also celebrate you as our Heavenly Father. Lord, speak to us from your word. Let Dishan decrease, let the Holy Spirit increase. Let your will be done and change our lives according to your word. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, fathers, you are a unique and impossible breed. I know, because I am one. Now, today, we as a church honor you and salute you as the role you play in this wicked and corrupt and unfair world is incredible. Uh, a Greek philosopher once said, when a son behaves wrongly, it's the father who should be punished. 
since he's the one who failed to do his job. You know, Jayani, my wife, has been the one in our family who spent most of her time shaping our three children. I was pastoring a small and actually struggling church in Kandy uh, as the children were growing up, and she kept us all together. One thing that Jayani would always warn me about was not to be too harsh with the kids when I came home tired after work. You know, um, the workload and, and high sugar and my kids, uh, you know, um, got affected in a way that I didn't realize um, that they were getting affected by my behavior until actually they were older. And once we were having a chat, sitting around the bed, and um, after they had actually grown up, and they all said, they said, Tati, we were afraid of you when we were growing up. And boy, that hit me hard. I was upset. I was sad as I didn't realize it. I thought I had, you know, I, I was not like that. You know, I, I've shared this before, but I want to share it again. One day I, I saw something like a vision of, of a tender flower with petals that was in my hand. And one day when I got angry, I just crushed the flower. And the Lord showed me my youngest daughter, Dilani, and told me, don't crush her. Friend, your kids need to be nurtured and watered and handled with care. Fathers, be careful how you handle them. You know, far too many men have become detached, distant, and passive in the two most important areas of their life. That's home and church. They no longer take the lead or, or show initiative. They avoid responsibility. You know, in our jobs, we work and work and work, and we play the lead and we do everything possible. But then we come home and we take a back seat. And our wives have to take the lead and do everything, not just in, in things around the house, even in, in the spiritual leadership, we take a back seat. And sometimes men run away from their commitment and resist obligation in these departments. You know, and, and that's not very healthy. It's not very healthy at home, not very healthy in the church, and not very healthy with the relationship with God. You know, fathers, you are so critical to a family. You are so critical. You are such a, a core of any family. You know, don't let anyone tell you any different. Uh, don't let anybody uh, demean you or, or, or uh, make it less of a value of who you really are. You see, what are the effects when fathers are not around? The, this lack of manhood and fatherhood, you know, this uh, shrinking away of true men has hurt our families, hurt society, hurt our church, churches, because Fathers, you are so critical, so important. Let me read you a statistic. It's, the statistic says that 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. 85% of children that exhibit behavior disorders are from fatherless homes. 71% um, uh, of teenage school dropouts are from fatherless homes. 75% of all youth patients in drug abuse centers are from fatherless homes. 85% of youth in prison are from fatherless homes. It also says that 70% 70, 70 of teen pregnancies are from fatherless homes. You know, I believe that the physical absence of a father is the most serious problem facing most families today. Fathers, you are so important and so critical to a family. You know, I guess God knew what he was doing when he set up the proper order in the home. You know, these statistics are for homes where the father is physically absent right, and not in the home. But uh, don't you think that they can also apply to those of us who are mentally absent? We're physically there, but mentally someplace else, when our minds are always on something else. 
You know, what about those of us who are emotionally absent? Fathers and men, you know, sometimes the home and the church, you know, have come to a place of uh, being stagnant or, or come to a place of decay because you and me, you know, we shy away into the background, afraid to accept responsibility, to lead and to do what is right. At work, boy, we lead and we are champions and we get up there. Then when we come home, men take a back seat. Men leave the leadership to the wife. And, and even, even in spiritual matters. You see, your child's life will largely be determined by how hard you work at being a father. Another can never fulfill, you see, his or her need for you. Your child needs you. Are you being the father you ought to be? Don't forget that whatever position you hold at work, you can and will be replaced, but you can never be replaced in your own family. Father, dear father, you are very important. You're an important part of the family and you are an integral part of our society. You know, father, you are a hero and a blessing that God put here on earth to bless your family and bless many others, to bless your children, bless your spouse, you know, to bless people who are not at, only at work, but even at home. Sometimes we think that to be a successful father, you need to have name and fame and be recognized by society. But I want to tell you that true love and effectiveness as to who you are, can't be judged by your position, your wealth, or your educational qualifications. It comes by your love and your dedication to the ones that you love. That's how it does. The famous general, Douglas MacArthur, is known to be one of the greatest military leaders of our time, uh, actually of all time. You know, he led the Allied armies to victory over the Japanese in World War II. But when this great general was asked about his heroic life in an interview, he said this publicly. He said, by profession, I am a soldier, and I take great pride in that. But I am much more prouder to be a father. It is my hope in life that when my son grows up, and, he, that, and when he remembers me, he will remember me not for my victories on the battlefield, but for my leadership and example in the home. Friend, that is a great testimony. Let me share with you very quickly about the greatest super dad ever. He is a role model for all you dads uh, who are listening to me. And he will also give you uh, the, the characteristics or the ingredients needed to be a great dad. But also for those of you, I want to tell you, some of you are here and on Father's Day when you think of your dad, you have sour feelings because it was not a great relationship or something went wrong or, or many things went wrong. And, and today you're saying, you know, I, I, I don't care about what... Uh, about my dad. I don't care about today. Because in some of you, it's not only you having a bad relationship with your father, you have carried that into your fatherhood. And you are not having a great relationship with your children or your child. You know, I want to tell you, super dad, I'm going to talk about today from God's word, right? If you look at his life and what he does and how he relates to you, it'll change your life. And it'll change even your relationship, even if your father is dead and gone. It'll still change your relationship in how you look at your father because I'm going to talk to you about an ingredient that will change your life and it'll affect you being a dad. Because this dad loves you no matter how old you are, no matter how bad things have been, no matter what has happened, no matter even if you've gone and done things that would hurt him, he still will show you what it is to have unconditional love. And I wish we could all have that. Unconditional love. And I want to tell you a story that Jesus told. It's found in Luke chapter 15. Luke 15 verses 11 through 22. Luke 15, 11 through 22. The story is about a rich 
uh, man who had two sons. And uh, one day, out of the blues, the younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So the father, I'm sure, would have been hurt and upset and felt um, terrible, but he uh, agreed to do that. So he divided his wealth between his sons. A few days later, the younger son packed up all his belongings, and the, the Bible says he moved to a distant land. And in that distant land, he wasted all his money in wild living. And uh, while living, he probably drank and partied and had women and did everything he could do and may have done a lot of things that brought shame to this uh, father who was probably a very influential person in society. But then, after some time, the Bible says his money ran out. And, you know, when money runs out, the friends run out. And there was nobody. And then a great famine also swept over the land. And the boy began to starve. So he went looking for a job. And the only job that he could find was to look after pigs. So he went to this pig pen or where the pigs were. And as he was looking after the pigs, he got so hungry that he began to eat the food of the pigs. And uh, while he was in this state of being in the pigsty, the Bible says he came to his senses. He finally came to his senses. And he said, you know, at home, my father's servants have food to eat. And here I am dying of hunger. I will get up. I'll go to my father because I have sinned. And I'll tell him a big sob story. Right, I planned it. I planned what I'm going to say. And in verse 18, he says, I will say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. And so what happened was this man, he went home. And while he was a long way off, his father saw him coming. That means the father has been looking and been waiting for his son to come back and must have waited for months, even years. And while he was a long way off, the father saw him coming and he was filled with compassion and love. And he ran to his son, he embraced him and he kissed him. You see, after he ran to him, hugged him, kissed him, right? Then his son opened his mouth and said, Father, I have sinned and gave his speech, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father said to his servants, quick, bring the finest robe, put it on my son, get the ring on his finger, bring sandals for his feet, kill the calf, and we are going to have a party. We are going to celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead, and now he has returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. You know, this is a story of true love and forgiveness. Everyone listening to me today, father, mother, child, whoever you are, right? This, I know it's on Father's Day and I'm mainly talking to men and fathers, but this goes to everybody. I am talking to you if you want to have a successful life, a life of peace, a life of joy, to move forward. Many things have already there's, uh, happened in life. There's so much water that has flowed under the bridge. You have to learn the lesson that we see from this story, which is the lesson of forgiveness. It's a lesson of forgiveness. You know, most of our lives, sometimes we are trying to measure up to please and impress our parents or spouses or children or even our bosses. We think that acceptance comes only if we measure up to someone's expectations. You know, but it is depressing when we just don't measure up. In this story, the son was ungrateful to the father who taught him who took care of him. There was no mother. He wiped his nose when he needed to. He broke rest. He loved him. But he didn't care. The boy didn't care. He couldn't even wait for the father to die to get his inheritance. You know, he caused the father grief. He, he caused the father loss of face and shame in society by his riotous living and prostitution. The son was disgracing the father in every way. 
The son actually offered nothing to the family. He took everything and offered nothing. But you know the key is the father loved him and forgave him. He loved him and forgave him in the midst of great pain and loss of face. He saw him as a son, not as a wicked man or not as a servant. You see, the father loved him after he uh, uh, came back. But you know, he, actually, if you read the story, it's not after he came and he sobbed and he begged and he said, Father, please, I have messed up. Please forgive me. And, and after he sobbed and begged and because he sobbed and begged, he was loved. No, listen to me. Some of you, you're waiting. You're waiting for the sobbing and the begging and the humi humiliation to forgive. No, before the son could open his mouth, when he saw him, he ran, he kissed him with compassion, he forgave him and he loved him immensely. You see, the father had compassion before the son spoke. The father did, uh, showed action in restoring the son, forgiving him before one word came out of the father's mouth. I'm here to tell you that when you truly forgive, you don't wait till you're asked. You forgive because God is ready to forgive you or God has already forgiven you. And that's why we are able to forgive others. I want to tell you unforgiveness is a cancer. Unforgiveness eats us from the inside. You can have all the money, all the position, all the wealth, but I want to tell you when your relationships go sour and something goes wrong and we don't forgive and we don't bring healing to the relationship, we can't sleep. Oh, we'll find fault with everybody else because we are in turmoil. And I want to tell you, we need to learn to forgive. We need to restore that person to their original place. He didn't say, okay, you can be my chief servant. He said, you are going to be my son. Bring the robe, put the ring on him. Give him the rights and privileges of a son. That's the kind of dads that children are looking for. My friend, I want to tell you, will you put your kids sometimes above your friends, above the position, about what others think. Sometimes we put them down because what others think is the most important thing in our lives. And we live like that and we impress and then we wonder what happened to our children. No, it's because we didn't put them in that place of a son amidst their mistakes, amidst the things they have done. You know why? That's why God gave children parents. You know, our children, I want to tell you, if you are a believer of, of, of Christ and God is your God and, and you know that your children are a gift from God, you know, we are holding our children in trust for God. They belong to Him. We hold them in trust for Him. And, and, and actually, what do we do? How do we treat them? You see, would you look at your children and say, I love you in spite of who you are, in spite of what you have done. Because God has loved me, I am going to love you. You see, would you let them know that you are not ashamed of them, but that they are the most important thing in your life. I want to tell you, when, when your children know that they are the most important thing um, in your life, that alone, that doesn't need any money, it doesn't need any position, it doesn't need your economy to be great. That alone gives them security and makes them strong and will make them what God wants them to be. You know, many can't picture the love of the father. I want to tell you why, because you didn't receive love from your earthly father or mother. You know, some of you, maybe you can't remember the day that your mother or your father looked at you and said, I love you, son, I love you, daughter, and hugged you. You know, let, let me ask you a question. Close your eyes for a moment where you are. Just close your eyes. How many of you listening to me have never heard your father say, or your mother, I love you? I love you. How many can't even remember getting a hug from your father? You see, it, you can open your eyes now. It's just a short reminder to all of you who are working so hard in life that we should not let time slip through our fingers without having spent some time with those who really matter to us, those close to our hearts. I, you know, I, it's easier to preach for me than it was to live this out. 
busy with everybody else's problems and trying to do this and that and facing criticisms and, and you know, uh, trying to deal with so many things that you sometimes miss the greatest gift God has given you, your children, and you miss to put that kind of love and, and, and show them how much you really care. You see, please remember to share your time with those you love and care about. You know, my friend, if we die tomorrow, if you die tomorrow, the company that you are working for will easily replace you in a matter of days. But your children that you leave behind will feel the loss for the rest of their lives. And come to think of it, sometimes we pour ourselves more into our work than to our family. You know, we need to say, Lord, just as you love your children, you love me, help me to love in return. I want you to listen to this real life story. Uh, please listen to this. Hi, everyone. It's my honor to share a few words with you on Father's Day. My name is Prasad. I'm married to Vanessa. I have a son who's four years old. His name is Caleb. And in my family, I'm the youngest of three children. My father was a businessman who was in Japan for uh, 35 year, over 35 years. So it was our mother who looked after us. You can say I had things in life, but I can also tell you I didn't have things in life. And one of the important things I was missing in my life was a father's love. So I grew up as a kid not knowing the father's love. I didn't know the feeling of when your dad says, I love you, son. I'm proud of you. You're doing great. I, I, my father never said those things to me. So I grew up very angry and bitter, hatred towards my dad. So much so that I even tried to kill my dad many times. I grew up with a lot of insecurity as a kid um, because I didn't, I didn't think that I was worth living. And I tried to even take my life few times. I would do anything to anyone who will just say, well done, Prasad. Simply because my father never said those words to me or showed love the way I wanted him to. Well, there was a turning point in my life as a teenager where God spoke to me and said that my father is not capable of loving me the way I want him to. Simply, he's not capable, he's helpless because that's the way he was loved by his dad. I need to understand that, realize that no father is perfect. I know that me as a dad, I'm not perfect, but I had to realize it. So I would say almost 20 years ago, I forgave my dad and God healed my heart with all that anger, with all that disappointment, with all that hurt it was in my heart and I was carrying it for years and years as a son. The love that God poured in my heart that day is the reason today I am able to look at my son and say, son, I love you. Not just love my son, to show compassion to people and children. It was only possible because of him. Friends, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. I received that simply because I asked God to help me forgive my dad and I allowed God to fill my heart or to love me with his perfect love. Today, God has given me the privilege to work at People's Church for the past 10 years. I've been a part of the Compassion Arm of the Church, Center of Hope, where we look after thousands of children uh, who come from broken families, underprivileged communities, we feed them, we educate them, we, we show love to them, and I'm part of that team. Can you imagine the same kid who grew up today is able to look at his son and say, son, I love you. Can you imagine that same kid who grew up without a father's love he is part of the church, compassion arm, and he is loving other children? Can you imagine? Maybe you're a father who's in your 30s. Maybe you're a father who's in your 50s. But you realize that you don't have that capacity. You're not able, you're not capable of 
loving your children the way you want to or the way they expect you to love them i'm here to tell you you must first forgive your dad and then god will help you he will give you that capacity to love your children the way you should son daughter probably you're just wondering why your father is not able to love you the way he want him to and i completely understand why that is but i want you to forgive your father when you forgive your father god will fill that void in your heart like he did in mine today my father is not alive he passed away 10 years ago and i can truly tell you i have no bitterness i have no anger in my heart for my father i can truly say that i love him and um, if i had a chance to live my life again i would ask i've asked god to give me the same father i don't want anyone else i want the same dad friends that statement itself is a miracle and i received that simply because i forgive my dad and i love god to fill my heart with his perfect love so if you are in that place i want to tell you if jesus can take a kid like me who had no uh, uh, father's love he didn't know anything about father's love but turn me into who i am today he is able to do that for you but you just have to love him to fill your heart with that perfect love of his thank you you know just like in that story i want to tell you god is a super dad that will never fail you he will never let you down or leave you when you need him today there is a father who will forgive and cleanse you and make the difference in your life where you will have the assurance of salvation not just for time but for eternity you know in 1 peter 5:7 1 peter 5:7 it says give all your worries and cares to god for he cares about you you know he cares about you my friend do you know that if there was no one else in this entire universe jesus would have still died on the cross because he cares about you he is the friend of a wounded heart he is the friend of all the people who look to him and come to him i want to tell you jesus will make the difference in your life because he wants to be with you if you will open your heart to him today he will come in today i want to pray for all of you but i would like all the dads to to get ready to receive a prayer and to pray together and to know that god is going to strengthen you and make you a better person and 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 prepare you for what is ahead i'm going to ask all the dads to please stand where you are stand where you are okay and i'm going to ask everybody around wherever in a home or wherever you're watching to come around the dad right come around uh, the dad that's standing put your hand on their shoulder because jesus wants to give you unconditional love he will never leave you he will never forsake you and i want to tell you if you give him the opportunity he will come take the brokenness the pain the sorrow and he will put his arms around you because he shed his blood on calvary for you so today i want us to pray let's all pray together but let's pray for the dads first bow your heads close your eyes father in heaven i bring every dad to you every father and i pray lord that today that just as you are revealed in your word whatever a background or whatever past we come from whether there was a great relationship with our father or we had a dad who had failed or whatever it is you are the super dad you are the one who never fails and you've shown us lord that you care for us i pray for everybody who needs healing from their relationship with their father right now in the name of jesus to touch every heart let healing word you flow lord we have seen through your word that the way it flows is by forgiveness help each one to forgive 
Lord, to forgive so that we are not the person who drinks the poison and hopes our enemy dies. Lord, we are the one who forgives so that the person who has maybe brought harm into our life becomes the joy of our lives. Father, and I also pray for every father to be able to have a commitment of time and, and energy and forgiveness with their children so that they will be exactly what you want them to be. And Lord, we know when relationships come right, our whole life comes right. So I pray that your peace and joy will be there. Pray with me, each one. Keep your eyes closed. And if you haven't asked the Lord Jesus to come into your heart, this is the time. Just say, Lord, come into my heart. Pray where you are. Say, come into my heart. Wash my sins. Wash my wrongs. Say it where you are. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my heart with the blood that you shed on Calvary. Take away all my sins. I open my heart to you. Lord Jesus, come and take over my life and make me your child and help me to walk in your paths. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Dishan, for that uplifting message. And one more time, God, we thank you for all things are possible in you. Friends, uh, I want to bring some quick announcements to you. Uh, last week, there have been some very disturbing news items. Uh, but I want to tell you, as people are going through a difficult situation, when they need to speak to someone, there is always somebody available in our Lanka Lifeline. The number is there before you. Please pass it on. Please pass it on. People might not tell you that they need to speak to someone. But if you send something, please pass it on. It can save a life. Our prayer times are available on social media. And please go there. Join us in prayer. Prayer can change all things. We believe God and we know that prayer, as we cry to a prayer answering God, will change situations that you and I are faced every day. I want to remind our regular family and all others who are interested in our services, in-person services are there every Sunday at People's Church, Narham Peter, in the English at 11 a.m. In the English at 11 a.m. We invite you and we look forward to seeing you there to enjoy the message and the warmth of fellowship and straight on ministry as well. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Remember, our life is far greater than the circumstances around because we have a great God. God bless you one more time.